Welcome to Behind the Name. We are your hosts, and my name is Nikita De Haan. And my name is Irenaeus Snell. And in this podcast series, we talk with female athletes about their lives and their personal brands. Let's get ready. In our newest podcast, we have two uh, new guests, Leila Iskandar and Masa Ziadeh. They are both players for Etihad Club in Jordan. So welcome, girls. Hello. Hi. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Both of you are, I think, the first guests we have from the Middle East. How is it to be a professional football player there? Um, actually, first of all, it is quite nice playing in Jordan because um, almost all the teams are on the same level, which is good for our performance. I feel like personally, to be a professional football player, it doesn't matter where you are. It's about you and how much hard work you put in. So it is quite nice here. Uh, about the Jordanian Pro League, uh, this is the, like you can say, it's the third time there's a Jordanian Pro League here in Jordan. But uh, you can, like, the life here as a player in Jordan is more like a semi professional. For Jordanian players, as most of the girls, they either work and study beside playing the game they love. The club is doing his best to help the girls in pursuing their dreams on and off the pitch. As for me, I work and also play. Also, there are a couple of girls uh, who have jobs within the club in the morning and they train and play for the team at night. Yeah, I think I haven't mentioned this, but I also study I used to find it actually hard to study and play, but you know, at the end of the day, you train for like four hours and then you recover. I know it takes lots of energy, a physical energy, but I feel like I'd rather put this time, the recovery time or the rest time on continuing my education. Is everyone doing that in your team or are there also full-time professionals or everyone is semi-professional? Uh, most players, they usually study and play. And like there are a couple of girls who work a nine to five job and they have to manage their time with their trainings and games. And uh, there are few people who only play football. So for the clubs, it's not possible to pay you enough to live from, right? I think in the Middle East, it's not like Europe and the U.S., But it, it is quite good compared to other countries, like compared to my own country, which is Lebanon. Uh, I think no one gets paid there. That's what I can remember two years ago because I've left Lebanon two years ago. So, yeah, it is it is getting better, but it needs time. So they're getting paid, but not well enough to do nothing but play football. And I feel like there is development in women's football everywhere. But also in, in both of your countries, right? Do you see the differences or do you feel there are differences compared to, for example, one year ago, two years ago? Yeah, I think uh, like when if, if you want to compare this year to last year, there are any you can say that now everybody is improving. Like all cultures have challenges, but in our world, we faced so many opposition from the local community. When we first started as girls are not supposed to play football, only it's o and it's only men's game. And also we didn't have many resources to work with. Today, the game in the US and in Europe, you can say that it, they are more developed and players can focus on the game uh, like for full time. But here in Jordan, as Lily said, um, they don't pay like like how how they do in the US and in Europe. I also read that there, I don't know who said it, but there was someone that said that the, the motivation of the players is so much bigger. Personally, when I see Europe, like the way women's football in Europe is getting better, and you can guys see that uh, it's getting better with the with the fans, with the people watching women's football. So when you see this uh, very good vibes around the world, you get the motivation to put even more work so you can succeed or to reach your goal. But this is, has always been, I think, my dream, every girl's dream to play somewhere 
where football is very developed. Do you think the same, Massa? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the more you level up with the the more work you put in and the more you like like you love the game with more focus and more attention, so uh, you will become a better player. I heard here already um, something about the dream, a dream of going to to play for for bigger leagues. What Lily just said is that um, for both of you a dream, and which kind of competitions are you looking at, and what kind of dreams do you exactly have in football? Okay, so before I come here to Jordan, I've played for one year in Denmark in Hobby Q, which is uh, a very good team that has uh, participated in the Champions League. It was um, a very tough but a very amazing experience. I look forward to get back to Europe. Um, uh, I came here for Jordan to play more. Like I didn't have much playing time in Denmark, which I expected because you know the the level was so high. Like I came from Lebanon and to Denmark, it was quite like there was quite a difference. There is no specific country for me. I feel as long as I'm playing somewhere where there's a competitive uh, league, uh, that's what I want. Like there's no specific country or anything. What about you, Masa? Yeah, of course. I never wanted to be anything but a football player, honestly. The moment I was called up for for the first team in an- another club, my perspective uh, was only playing football as a hobby to build a dream of becoming a professional football player. And now, honestly, currently, I am only searching for playing opportunities throughout like normal socials, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. But I feel to get to, to a better level, players need proper presentation, which will hopefully become the case in the next few years and play a professional outside Jordan. Exactly, because that was also a question that I wanted to ask further, because we tried to look up um, football in Jordan and we couldn't find a lot of information. So we were like, OK, how, how are you going to reach that visibility for the other clubs in other leagues that they can see you and that they want to Oh, want to bring bring you to to the club? Is it through national team games, or do you also think that the the scouts are going to your league enough, or maybe is it through social media to post it enough on on Instagram? How, how, what is your view on that? I feel I wish um, there were more agency. Sorry, Masa, in yeah. our countries in the Middle East, but sadly there are not a lot and. Uh, I feel like we have so many talents here in the Middle East, but people are not aware of it because, as you already said, uh, you can find lot, lots of things uh, on social media and stuff. But, you know, everything takes time and hopefully one day we'll get there. We'll get to the support and the attention we've always wanted um, as uh, women uh, in the Middle East. Personally, I feel like the... Um, national team helps a lot because you know when you play with uh, teams abroad at the end of the day you can't be invisible if you're too good that's why i think like i know it's hard for us yes but if you're too good they're gonna notice like there's no way so it's hard work for me only hard work well what do you need to improve maybe in your countries, not only on the on the football sides, in the football environment, but also just the, the general environment. What could help improve your visibility? Uh, I think people's mindsets, maybe. Like everyone needs to know that everything else in our life, as uh, nutrition, uh, what time we sleep, the quality of the trainings. So all these... Uh, I think they they will help, and there there must be like sacrifices and to focus on the game only. Um, for me, I think uh, I know that we can't con- we can't control like social media, uh, the the games to be uh, to be live and whatever. We can't control it at the end of the day, but we need it, yes. But I think the only thing we can focus on and that. That is different from Europe and the U.S. is the mentality of the player. It's the mentality, the mentality, the commitment, the 
being consistent with your work. Like we need this, we need more. But you can't blame people that are not getting paid well enough to put all their dreams and all their focus on football, you know? Like what if I got get injured? What's gonna happen? No one is gonna be there, you know? So you'll always have to find a, a plan B for you to study, to work or, or whatever. So I wish I can say that I have one solution. So women's football is much more supported in our countries, but there isn't. But hopefully with time, like we didn't know that we're gonna come here this far, but here we are. So yeah. Yeah, ni nice to hear. And yeah, the mentality is important, of course. And uh, listening to you, I think you have the right mentality already. And it is important to study on the site as well. Can you can you maybe tell us a little bit more about both of your journeys so far? How it how you became the place that you are right now? Yeah. Okay. So I started playing football since I was seven years old, mainly with my brother. And in school breaks in school, my friends like uh, they used to uh, join. Then when I became 14 years old and with many years on the school team, I had the, the, the first opportunity to play for a club. Uh, the name of the club was Shabab al Urdan first team. And I was the youngest player back then. I was called up for the U17 World Cup national team in 2016, which took place in Jordan and played for the U19 as we traveled to China, uh, Vietnam, Iran and Lebanon. And we won some like some championships. And in one of the games I played against Lily in Lebanon. Um, on the senior level, I stayed a player in Shabab al Urdun until the club decided to shut down women's football and to focus on men's football, even though the club is the most decorated in the history of Jordan's women's football. So I played one season with Al Ahli club. And then in 2022, I moved to the newly promoted Ittihad club where I am in my second season now. Okay, so it's quite complicated, but it started um, as Masha, Masa mentioned. Uh, it was nothing uh, serious with my siblings playing outside the house. And then I wanted to join an, an academy. There, was, there weren't a, a girls academy, sadly. I thought I was the only girl that plays, foot, plays football in the whole world, by the way. So I had to play with the boys for three years, which uh, I love this period of time. I think it made me very aggressive, even though it was hard on my parents to see me going with the boys every time, everywhere. Then I joined uh, an academy, I moved to playing under, under, under 15, under 17, and then seniors. I played in Lebanon and won the league and then moved to Denmark for, for one year. Then came here to Jordan. That's my second season here. Uh, and yeah, that's it. One of the things you said, Leila, is that when you were younger, you thought you were the only girl playing football. Um, this is really, for me, that's really interesting because, of course, when I was younger, I was one of the few girls playing football. But uh, it was, uh, uh, it has changed so much over the years. But how how did it how did it feel? Did people accept you wanted to play football or? Uh, no, honestly, it was tough. They used to call me like they used to be bullies and call me like you're a boy, you're playing football, boy with the long hair. Uh, and also, like honestly, my dad was not very okay with the fact that I used to go with the boys all the time. Like you know, he used to. Uh, like he's a dad he's caring so he was afraid it was tough but i don't know how but i didn't want to stop like every time i hear a bad stuff about me like you're a boy or whatever like very bad stuff for a 10 years old girl they wouldn't make me sad instead they would give me more motivation to reach my goal and honestly no one no one expects you to reach your goal like one girl in I don't know how many people want to be a professional football player. Like, that's always weird for them, not for me. Because here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you showed them. You showed them. Yeah. <laughs> and what about well, you, Masa? How was, how was there for you? Uh, no, one, no one accepted us, to be honest. But uh, even in school, 
my friends used to laugh at me because I always went to school in my football shoes and spent all my break times and uh, like playing football with the boys. But sometimes I forget to eat. But really, I mean, you can say nobody accepted us. Only like my parents and my brother used to support me all the time. And I got bullied for always wearing football shoes to school and not mm-hmm. wearing like ballerinas and those things so yeah we got used to it but I like it I at least I accepted myself yeah, yeah that's, that's important good. I mean I mean I can like, I can remember that how I felt and I always feel like if you continue doing it because you of course you love the game so you want to yeah. continue playing and you like doesn't care what people think well of course you kind of yeah. care but um, the fact that you keep going It, it creates the person you are today. It made yeah. you sp- stronger, probably. Yes. Yeah. I think I think uh, once you have confidence, you have everything. I love that. You were mentioning your your dream, and I was curious when did it really start to come up for you, for both of you, that you wanted to become a professional football player. When when did the dream start? Because Lila, Lila, if you said. Um, you thought you were the only girl to play football. Did you think also, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a professional football player playing with the men, or did you already know, like, hey, I can play with the girls somewhere, even if I'm the only one? But it was one day we had um, a tournament. I was playing with the boys, of course, and then I saw two girls. No, they weren't girls. They were like 25 years old playing football. I was so shocked. I like. I forgot about my game. I was just looking at them. I was like, what? There are some girls that that plays football other than me. It was so weird, honestly. <laughs> I know it sounds weird now, but it was like this. So I think once I knew there was there were women playing football professionally, uh, I wanted that dream. Like, it wasn't when I was 16 or 15. No, it was the dream was too young. I feel like the dream got bigger and bigger. It started with me playing as an activity outside the house, and then it got more serious. I wanted more every time. So, like, I think that was the moment I felt like, okay, so there are other women that play football. I want to make it to the to to be a professional one day. Nice, and massa. When when did the dream start for you? Um, I think when I was young, but I started to see that uh, I'm on the right path when I was uh, when I had the opportunity to practice uh, with Shabab Al Urdun, and I went to the first practice. I was the youngest player with all professional players and experienced ones. You can say I was 13 years old, and the captain was like 27 years old. And when I started seeing that there are girls and women who play football. I got excited more and motivated more and I just left this practice and went to my parents and told them my journey started uh, from now on. So the first experience with with a professional team made you 100% sure you wanted to become a pro. Yeah, like uh, it gave me a really hard push. Like you can say that I'm I'm 100% sure that this is the thing that I, I really want. Nice. And well, since you you study uh, on the side, is it something that is re- that you're studying something related to sports, or what? What, what are you studying? Um, I study psychology. I find it find it quite interesting because I want to continue with uh, sports psychology, which uh, which is very interesting because you know football is not about only practicing well, hard work. Uh, It's more about the mental health of the player. Uh, it's what it's about what the player faces in his or her daily life. You know, if you're you've had a, a fight with someone before the game, it's gonna affect your uh, your performance. It's it's related to football. I find it quite interesting. Like whenever they ask me why did you do psychology, it's I feel everything. I feel like everything is uh, related to football now somehow. And Masa, what what did you study? Yeah, I I finished uh, as an accountant, and now I'm working in a football academy. Its name is Six Yard. So I work in a football academy, and I play football. 
as yeah what, what, what Lily said I mean now everything can be football yeah dream job we we talked about uh, the your the you, your youth, uh, how you got um, in touch with football, how it has grown, uh, how you the whole journey from kid to to well the player you are today. What is the do you think there are differences between other continents, other countries, and the ones you you grew up in? I think yeah, like. Uh, you can see uh, here in Jordan, we didn't have many resources to work with. Like uh, the fields were not available always. They're not available because there are uh, like the priority is for the men's here in Jordan. So uh, unlike US and in Europe, uh, there they are more developed uh, players and they can focus on the game like fully. Unfortunately, not all girls can do that here. The number of girls playing the game here is still not satisfactory compared to the number of players in the US and in Europe. I agree with Massa. I think it's the mentality of the people in this environment that was, was not anymore. I don't think so. That was tough, but now it's getting better. Like once there are so many girls that want to play football, Eventually, football is gonna change. Like there are gonna be more teams, more competition, uh, uh, and people are gonna watch. Like before, people wouldn't know that there is a women's team. But now, if you see that there are too many girls that are playing, too many academies, then the support is gonna be for uh, girls and women. Yeah. Does it? Maybe a tricky question, but does it sometimes feel unfair that? you when you were younger didn't have the same opportunities in that way than for example players in Europe it is it is tricky <laughs> yeah it's sad honestly because you know when you when you know that you have a talent and you have the the goal and you have everything but you don't have the support uh, that maybe the good trainings you need Like, you know, you can train, like, people can be like, oh, I'm a coach now, I can train. No, you need a specific um, certificates and a specific uh, way to train kids, you know. So, yeah, I personally wish I had this when I was younger, but, like, I can't say anything now. I need to to do what I can do, like, what I can what I can control at least. And what 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 do you need to do more now, or what can you do more at this moment to make the next step in your career? I think like to work harder, and in order uh, like to uh, introduce yourself to other clubs and other teams uh, outside uh, Jordan. Like you have to collect all your videos and to analyze all your games. And to, like, for example, to do a profile for you as a player in order to introduce it uh, to other teams. Like how, for example, you go to a company, you want to work there, you, you'll you give them your CV. So I think that's the same for football. You have to give them what, uh, what in what position you play and everything else. Other than that, like on the personal stuff that you should do other than training hard and stuff, yeah, you should always try to have some contacts with people abroad as much as you can how how did you because you also play in the, played in Denmark how did you get your contacts there yeah um okay so it was when i played west asia with the national team and i was the top scorer back then I, it was an uh, under 19 tournament i think yeah So it was back then when I got so many support, uh, so many posts on social media, like people knew about me. It was like, uh, you know, this point where you are not famous, but somehow in your own country. So there was, um, uh, you know, Capelli's owner is uh, from Lebanon, actually. His name is George Tillis. Uh, so he wanted so he has the club he has a hobby club and he's the sponsor of Capelli as well so he wanted uh, a player from his own country to join the team and since I was 
like doing very well with the national team and I got the top score. Uh, they chose me to go there. Apparently, your performance there and every all the, the interviews, the newspapers, it created a platform that showed you as a player and as a person, um, which probably made it, well, which increased your visibility. Do you think more of those platforms, also, for example, the, the podcast you, you, you're joining, helps you to um, increase that visibility? Of course it does. Like podcasts such as this one like everything that would make us visible women's visible uh it it doesn't matter how there isn't uh, a tv channel for us like that's the thing as well like if you don't if you sit at home want to watch a a, i don't know a movie you see girls playing that that is good like that that would help uh, women Yeah. And are you yeah. both looking for more of those opportunities to increase that visibility? Yes, always. Like you can't be somewhere and just don't have a plan B or a future steps or plans. Like personally, I always have like it doesn't have to be like I know what I'm going to do, but at least I have some contacts. I I have a goal. What about you, Masa? Yeah, I agree. In my opinion, uh, I always need more. I always want more. Like, I think a player uh, is always thirsty and, like, he always looks for things to feed their hunger. So, yeah, I think that's the best way for a player to keep on going, for looking for more. I love the the hunger in, in both of your, <laughs> all <Yeah>. of your answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the spirit and that's also the spirit where a lot of people are looking for because it's it's the real motivation, you know? Yeah. Since now we are on this podcast, so we have people that can listen to you and you can increase your visibility. I would like you to share something, a, a quality of yours, both on and off the pitch. And maybe it's more fun to to give one of the best qualities about each other. So Master's is going to give a quality about... Leila and the other way around yeah. so other people um, that are listening to us can know you better on and off the pitch yeah honestly uh, I see uh, Lily a talented player and nothing looks impossible to her she's a, she's a real fighter when she plays the game she has nothing to lose she's a hard worker too and she has a lovable character on and off the pitch thank you Masa You're welcome. Uh, Masa, I'll start with outside the pitch. Masa is full of positive vibes. Um, uh, inside the pitch, Masa is very patient. And what I love the most about her, which is inside and out the, outside the pitch, is uh, her mentality. Uh, because it's similar to mine. She's always looking for more. Um, for me, like if someone is listening to me now, I would say that the only thing that differentiates uh, a football player from other, it's not the talent. Talent is not enough. It's the hard work. And it took me a lot to recognize that it's the hard work, it's the lifestyle, it's the recovery, it's the food, it's uh, the sacrifice. It's either you go in or you don't because football needs lots of sacrifice. It's not about training well or training one hour and a half per day. No, you need more. You need to recover for football. Like how I wish I can tell people how much uh, effort you need to put so you can succeed. Like it's not as easy as, as it looks. So yeah, if your friend, if your teammate next to you does a two passes at, at a time, do three. You need to do more, always. Like, if they stretch uh, 10 seconds, do 15 seconds. How are you going to get better if you're doing the same uh, training as your teammate? Like, you're going to be at the same spot at the end of the day. So if you want more, you need to work more. Very powerful I message. It also shows, again, both, well, you mentioned it about each other, the mentality and the hard work. And I think this message is uh, perfectly summing up uh, about your mentalities. So yeah, thank you yeah. very much. It was, was lovely to have you here on the podcast. And thank you for having us. 
Thank you.